Inside the Jack, we run into our buddy Alex. Pretty cool being at a new property for the vlog and we immediately hop into the 2.5, which is a $500 max buy-in. Pretty low cap in my opinion, but stick around. I go on a sun run for the ages and cash out for one of the biggest wins of my life. First hand of the night, I look down at King Queen of Spades from the small blind. What a pretty hand to start off the night with. The button raises it up to $15 and of course I'm gonna be putting in the three bet. I make it $50 to go. Now wait a second, the big blind thinks it's still $15 so he puts in three red chips, but then he quickly realizes that I raise it up to 50, but it's not gonna deter him from putting any more money in. If it's good for 15, it's good for 50, I guess. He calls and that brings in the initial raiser, the button as well. We're going three ways out of position to a flop. The flop comes queen nine five with two hearts. It's an interesting connected board and I'm out of position against two other opponents. I wouldn't blame anyone here for going for a bet, but I decide to mix in a few checks in this spot. That way I can check and then put in some calls. For instance, if I add hands like ace king with no hearts, I have to be able to check and then have some calls. I can't just check and fold all the time. That's what I decided to do. I put in the check, but unfortunately both other players check behind, which brings in the seven of spades on the turn. When the action's on me once again, I'm going to go for a bet this time. Additionally, my hand is kind of disguised because not too many players are going to be checking a queen in this spot. So I decide to bet out now for half pot of $75 and I expect the opponents to call me with a lot of hands. They can call me with, of course, any of their queens that they slow played on the flop. They can also call me with hands like Jack 10 and of course those nasty little flush draws that I hope don't get there on the river. Enough of that, I bet out for $75 and the big blind puts in the call, but we're not going heads up to the river. The button puts in $75 as well. He has a little piece of this board and we're off to the river in a $375 pot, which pairs the bottom card. It comes the five of diamonds. If I had to choose a card to see on the river, the five of diamonds would definitely be up there. It pairs the bottom card, giving me two pair, now beating hands like nine, seven. Additionally, it's not a heart, which is great to see. And it's not an eight or or a king bringing in the jack 10 straight. For that reason, I'm pretty stoked about my hand. Now, does that mean we should be betting out into the field? Probably, but also if you think about it, we could check here and probably get value from any of those draws I just mentioned. Any of the heart draws aren't gonna call a bet, and any of the straight draws also aren't gonna call a bet, so I think checking here actually will make me more money in the long run, because I can pick off all the bluffs, Whereas if I just bet out here for like $100 or $200, they're all going to fold and I'm only going to get called by those queens that are also going to bet if I check to them as well. So you see my point here. I decide to check, but I actually look stupid now doing this voiceover because everyone checks behind, including the big blind who checks behind queen jack offsuit. So I mentioned that if I checked, a queen would probably bet. Well, it turns out that the big blind is a savvy player and checks behind, which is, uh, which I don't think is the best play, but I'm not gonna rag on his play. He saves some money there and we're gonna take down that $375 pot. Second hand of the night, I go to battle with a pocket Ocho's in late position. Early position opens it up to $15 and I three bet her up to $45 from the button. She gonna fold her cards, no way Jose. She puts in the call and that leads us heads up to the flop which comes jack high. The board's rainbow, meaning there's no flush draws available out there. So when she checks it over to me, I go for a little bit less than half pot for $40. She finds a fold, and I know this was a boring hand, but uh, you can pick up a lot of big blinds this way. You gotta take some stabs in position. And pocket eights, it was the best hand there. Who knew? If you guys are enjoying this video and the sun run that I'm going on, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'm doing a huge giveaway over Christmas, and the only way you're eligible to win that money is if you subscribe to my channel. I'd Really appreciate it. All right, we'll bump this next hand up. This one's way more fun. I look down at pocket kings now from the hijack. The player on my right opens it up to $20, and of course, I'm gonna re-raise. I make it 65. The player to my left in the cutoff does the thing again where he puts in the call of the initial raise, not my raise. So he puts in 20 bucks, then realizes I made it 65, and then puts in the $65. So yeah, I guess if it's good for 20 now, it's good for 65. I'm not complaining, either way, the button puts in the call and the player on my right puts in the call. That means we're going four ways to the flop with the Cowboys. The flop comes Jack 3-3 Rainbow and the action checks over to me. 
I could be going for a bet here targeting any of the jacks, but because there's three other players in the pot, I decide to check and get my two streets on the turn and the river. When the button decides to check behind, we're off to the turn which comes the four of clubs, connecting the board a little bit more because now there's that backdoor club draw that's appearing. But the player to my right is not phased by that card at all. He bets out for $200. When I said I was checking on the flop to get value on the turn and the river, this is exactly what I meant. It's possible that the player on my right is betting out a jack. He also could be betting a flush draw thinking I'm weak by checking the flop. So yeah, I'm definitely putting in the 200 bucks here. The only decision is should I be raising? I'll let you guys debate that in the comments below, but either way, I'm the only one to put in the call and that's gonna bring us off to a river in an over $600 pot. The river card comes the nine of clubs, which isn't the best card in the deck, I guess, because some of his bluffs now get there with the backdoor club draw. But when he goes all in for around $200, I'm not going anywhere. I'm getting a great price with my overpair. I put in the call and he turns over queen jack and we're gonna scoop that $1,000 pot. See how I got my value on the turn and the river just by checking the flop. I think sometimes it's good to mix that in there and I definitely confused the opponent and got him to put all the money in. But then again, if he's putting all the money in with queen jack off, he probably would have called me for two or three streets anyways. Either way, I'm not complaining, $1,100 coming my way, and that brings us to the next hand. I looked down at 8-5 offsuit. Yeah, we played pocket kings, now we're gonna play 8-5 offsuit. To my defense though, I was in the straddle, there's three callers of the $10, and I checked my option, leading us to a flop which comes 5-5-4. The action's on me, I bet out for $15 with my three of a kind and only two players put in the call bringing us off to the turn which comes a seven of clubs. Small blind checks it over to the big blind who checks it over to me and I know a lot of you would go for a bet in this spot having three of a kind but my logic was the seven of clubs brings in a few draws like six, eight, and six, three. Okay, those hands might be pretty hard to have, but when two people call me on the flop with not too many draws available, it's likely one of them has a five. Now my eight kicker isn't the best, so if someone else had a five, they would have the best hand. So I'm gonna exercise some pot control and check behind on the turn and see if I can get some value on the river. The river card comes the 10 of hearts, which really doesn't change anything. If someone had a hand like 10-5, they were already beating me. So I'm not really too worried about that card. What is interesting though, is when the small blind checks it over the big blind, he bets out for $35. And now I debate going for a raise or just calling. When you go for a raise, you have to think, can worse hands put in a call? And for me, the answer here is kind of no. I know it feels really weird to just put in the call with three of a kind, but that's actually what I decided to do in the moment, giving the opponent credit for a better hand and not necessarily wanting to put in a raise and then find another re-raise. So I just put in the call, not thinking I can get value from worse. Small blind gets out of the way. And what does the big blind show? He shows nine five offsuit. So yeah, he's gonna take down that pot and I definitely saved a lot of money by checking back the turn and not raising on the river. He's gonna get rewarded with that nearly $100 pot and we move on to the next hand where I look down at seven eight of clubs from under the gun and I'm gonna start the action here by raising it up to $15. The cutoff and button both put in the call. Don't tell the big blind we're only playing for 15. He decides to raise it up to $60. I'm not going anywhere when I raise under the gun and then get three bet. I put in the additional $45, expecting the other players to put in the call as well. Unfortunately, the cutoff gets out of the way, but we're gonna go three ways to the flop when the button puts in the additional $45. Off to a flop in a nearly $200 pot, which gives us top pair, it comes eight, four, three with two diamonds. The big blind does not slow down. He bets out here for $80 and we both put in the call leading us off to a turn, which is still three ways. At this point, I'm putting the big blind on any combinations of hand. Pocket eights would be pretty hard to have, but he could still have all the over pairs as well as ace king and ace queen of diamonds. The turn card comes the 10 of diamonds, but now the big blind decides to slow down and check. He could be doing this to go for a check raise into the two opponents he's facing off against. So I decide to check it over to the button with my showdown value having a pair of eights. The button decides to check behind and that brings us off to a river. The river card pairs the board and it comes the 10 of clubs. So yeah, no more diamonds out there, but the top card pairs and the big blind doesn't bet again and he checks it over to me. 
Now, I think I kind of made a mistake here. I know it's not the biggest one, but I decided to check it over to the button. I'm a little bit upset at myself for not thinking about going for a bet here. The button check behind on the turn, so his hand most likely isn't the strongest. And now the big blind kind of announced the strength of his hand when he checks it over on the turn and the river. When you think about it, the 10 isn't really a welcome sight for the big blind. Like put yourself in his shoes if he had pocket jacks or pocket queens. Is this really a board you wanna see a $350 bet on the river with? Probably not, you're probably gonna to have to fold or if you call, you're in a really tough spot. So yeah, I probably could have put a lot of pressure on the opponents and turned my 8-7 into a bluff. Either way though, I check it over to the button and he's happy to get to showdown, he checks behind. The big blind turns over his hand, pocket queens, the ladies. So yeah, he's gonna win this pot, but you see how I could have put him in a really tough spot if I went for a large bet. Obviously he's snap calling like anything under 200. But let's say I go for a $500 bet. What is he doing with queens? He's probably gonna fold them, so yeah. Come on, Wolf, gotta think about that a little longer in the future. All right, the opponents are getting good pocket pairs. It's time for me to show what I can do with them. I look down at the bullets from under the gun and I raise it up to $20. Three players put in the call. We're going four ways to the flop and we get the best board possible when it comes ace high, ace nine, eight, bang, we flop top set. The big blind checks it over to me. I'm in under the gun and I bet out for $40 into the field. Player on my left raises me up to 115. Yes, he puts in a raise when I have top set. I have the nuts on this board. I know it can change on the turn in the river, but we are gonna take that 115 straight to the bank. Now I go into the tank for a little bit here, debating going for a raise. The reason why I thought about raising is if he has a hand like pocket nines or pocket eights and a diamond comes on the turn, that would definitely kill a lot of action. Additionally, we also want to protect our hand against hands like Jack-10 of diamonds, 7-6 of diamonds. So yeah, going for a raise has a lot of merit. We'll also be out of position the rest of the hand if I just put in the call, which is what I decided to do though. I put in the additional $75. That matches the 115 to the player on my left and we're off to a turn and I'd love to see a low black card. Not exactly what we get, the 10 of hearts peels off on the turn and I'm gonna check in flow over to the low jack. I would really prefer if he put in a bet and not have another free card come in on the river. And he listens to my inner thoughts when he bets out for three chips, but they're all black. That's $300, he nearly bets pot, announcing to the table and specifically myself that he has a great hand. Either that or he's playing a bluff pretty aggressive, but if he has a hand like Jack Queen and somehow got here, we can still improve with any board pairing card on the river. But I decide after a few seconds of posturing to go all in for around $850 total, and he sighs and then calls my bet. We're gonna play a $2,000 pot and he turns over ace nine of hearts. The river card comes the four of spades and just like that, we have this hand locked up. What a cooler, top set versus top two. The case ace came on the flop, say that three times fast. And we're gonna win that $2,000 pot, which is by far the biggest pot I've ever won in Ohio. And it feels pretty good to go on a sun run. The dealer's taking a while to count out my stack, but I'm not complaining in the slightest. We wanna make sure we get all the money that's headed my way. Next hand, we look down at Queen Jack of Diamonds from the big blind, a beautiful hand. The straddle's on and under the gun raises it up to $35. Now usually I play a raise or fold strategy, but I just want a big pot. I wanna see a flop here with Queen Jack of Diamonds. So I decide to put in the call and the straddle does as well. We're going three ways out of position to a flop, which comes King 10-5 with one diamond. There are two clubs out there, but I have an open-ended straight draw to go along with my backdoor diamond draw, so I'm liking this board just a little bit. The action checks to under the gun who bets out for $50, and I'm the only one to put in the call. I could go for a check raise, but I decide in this moment just to put in the call, and that's leading us to a turn. The turn card comes the ace of diamonds, bang, we turn Broadway. And on top of it, we turn the royal flush draw. Will this be the third time in my life that I make a royal flush? I really, really hope so. That'd be a sick title of the video. I decided to check and flow over to the under the gun position player and he checks behind. So we're gonna see the river card which comes the jack of spades. What a bad card to see. It puts a four liner to the straight out there. I already had the straight in my hand so I didn't need to see that jack. 
and it's not the 10 of diamonds, which I really would have preferred to see. I decided to go for some value here. No sense in checking it over to the under the gun player. So I bet out for $115 and he finds a fold. So good fold by him. I don't make the Royal Flush draw, but I'm scooping in yet another pot. A few players don't want to battle with me. I don't blame them. I'm on a sun run. The table gets four handed and we still have 2k in our stack. We look down at ace jack of clubs from the button. $10 straddle is still on, so we're playing 2-5-10 basically at this point, four-handed. I decided to raise it up to $35. Small blind puts in the call. That means we're going heads up in position to a flop. And if you couldn't tell already that I've been praying to the poker gods, check out this flop. Jack 4-3 all clubs. Bang! We flopped the nut flush. I don't know what I did to deserve this, but I'm not complaining in the slightest. He checks it over to me, so I go for a standard c-bet of $35. I don't want to go too big and scare him out of the pot, but I don't want to check behind and see another club on the turn. When I put in the $35, he puts in the call, leading us to the turn, which comes the nine of clubs. I said I didn't want to see another club on the turn, but I guess if he had a hand like King 10 with the King of Clubs, we're now going to make some more money. So I'm not complaining about the turn card. When he checks it over to me, I decide to get tricky, not thinking I can get three streets of value from a hand like Jack Queen or King Jack. So I check behind, hoping now definitely not to see another club on the river, and it comes the four of spades. So it does pair the board, I don't have the nuts on the board anymore, but I still have a very, very good hand. He now goes into the tank, which I find a little bit strange. When he eventually decides on a decision of checking it over to me, I'm going to go for a chunky overbet here of $165. When he tanks and then checks it over to me, it's likely he was thinking about going for a bet. So I needed to go for a large bet on the river to put him in a tough spot with any of his hands like ace jack, king jack, and queen jack. He ends up cutting out his chips, then pulls them back to his stack, and then eventually finds the right decision for me and puts in the call. I immediately turn over my ace queen of clubs for the flop nuts. He's disgusted that he put in that call there, kind of wish he would have saved $165. But I'm not mad by his decision. I'm scooping in that $500 pot, and that brings us to the second to last hand of the night. We upgrade from ace queen to ace king. I have almost $2,400 in my stack, and I'm in the straddle. The button raises it up to $35, and the action folds back around to me. Now, going against a player and the button is definitely a dangerous spot, but I have a beautiful hand to go to battle with. Ace king offsuit, so I decide to three bet him all the way up to $150. I really want to make it large here and disincentivize him from putting in the call. If he does put in the call, he's going to have to put in a lot of money because I'm going to be going out of position. And that's what he decides to do. He puts in the call, leading us to a flop, which comes king 4-4. Four, four. Great flop for me. I have top pair, top kicker. Actually, two pair to be exact. But now I'm not exactly too sure what I should do. Do you go for a half pot size bed here or do you check it over to the button? I ultimately decide to go for a bet. I want to protect against any of his ace queen, ace 10, ace jack of clubs types hands. So I continue betting here for $95. And after some hemming and hawing, he actually puts in the call. He doesn't raise me. He just calls, which I think is the right decision. If he has a hand like queens, king queen, something like that, we're off to the turn in a $500 pot, which comes the five of diamonds. Now when he calls me here, he's going to have a lot of ace queen, ace jack of clubs. He's also going to have some king queen, king jack. He's also going to have some other random pairs like pocket tens, pocket nines. So I actually decide to check here and play it a little bit tricky and try to pick off some bluffs and also trick him into calling a large bet on the river. The opponent on the button decides to check behind and that brings us to the five of hearts on the river, which is a great card. It doesn't put another club out there, which I definitely didn't want to see. So now I got to stick to the plan and go for a chunky river bet, putting a hand like king, queen, pocket queens, pocket jacks in a tough spot. There's $500 in the middle and I decide to over bet for $675. If I had a hand like ace, queen of clubs, I might play this the same way. So although this isn't the most balanced spot, I'm mostly going to have hands like pocket kings, ace, king, king, queen. I'm also going to have a few bluffs in there. So yeah, $675 is the bet he's facing. I expect him to call with any of his hands like queens and jacks. Unfortunately though, he folds and later said he had ace queen of spades. So yeah, he floated me on the flop with his backdoor spade draw and backdoor straight draw. But in the end, I'm taking down the W. That $500 pot is being shipped my way. No complaints from me.
It's getting late in the night, I decide to rack up my chips from 2-5 and head over to Alex's table. He's playing 1-3 and I end up getting into a great spot where I play Queen Jack and the flop comes Queen Queen Jack. Bang! We flop the boat. It was a $300 max buy-in at the 1-3 so of course I get the full double up and just adding a few more hundred dollars onto the profit for the night. After saying bye to our buddy Alex from Toronto, we end up heading over to the cage and cash out for $3,050 in which was the biggest cash out of my life in Ohio. All right, you guys, that wraps up the 2-5 session at Jack's in Cleveland. Shout out to everyone who said hi to me. I had a fantastic night, got in for 500, out for 3050, so my biggest win ever in Ohio. 2550, let's get that going in the right direction. Let's freaking go! Hope you guys run as good as I do on the felt. I'm here at my hotel. Tomorrow I'm driving to Penn State. That's four hours away. Going to the whiteout game versus Minnesota. Then I'm driving to Pittsburgh and playing another session. So that'll be another vlog. If you guys want to see that, make sure to subscribe. Drop a like. I hope you guys run as good as I do. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.